Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at this 20 watt LED tube from CDR King. Now, before you say anything, yes, I know I probably look super tired. Um, when we came back from Hong Kong, I actually got ill, so I've been taking like um, <laughs> so many medicines, like medicines to stop myself being sick, uh, medicines for fever, medicines for like uh, just a basic antacid, then I've got like these special drinks that you have to take. Um, so yes, I have been a little bit sick and that's why I look so tired, but still wanted to shoot this video anyway. Now, if you've been to see the Arking lately, you've probably seen they're selling these LED tube lights. They're also selling replacement tubes for like fluorescent fixtures. Um, and when you see the price, you're thinking to yourself, that cannot be right. Like seriously, 150 pesos for 20 watt LED tube light. That's like, to put that into perspective, um, that is around, oh, let's see, that's under three pounds UK. I'm not sure what that is in USD, but like a couple of bucks, like crazy, crazy cheap. So cheap, in fact, that this 20 watt LED tube that plugs into the AC socket is cheaper than this same LED um, light that I bought from CDR King. This one is USB instead of AC. This is only five watts and it cost me 200 pesos. So 200 pesos for five watts and in the same store 150 pesos for 20 watts. Something's a bit weird there, right? So anyway, I've only done like very limited testing with this, but my initial results really aren't that great. Um, let me first tell you what you actually get in the box. So with this one here, you get everything you need. Like it is a fixture and LED tube all in one. Uh, nothing's replaceable when it breaks, you throw the whole thing away. So this is an all in one unit. And if I can fit it all in the camera, sorry, let me try and work out. There you go. You can see that that's how long it is. Um, if you check the video description down below, I'll put an actual measurement, but just to give you an idea, that's how long it is so you can see on camera. And in the box, you get this little plug connector here, which you need to wire to an AC socket. You can see I've just temporarily used this terminal block to connect it to a two prong plug, which is then going into an adapter. Anyway, you have to do your own wiring. So all you'll get is this little white adapter here, which you add your own AC wiring onto. And then you could wire it directly into, well, in fact, I'm not even gonna get into that because if you want to do home wiring, you should get an electrician in. So it's very, very easy, but basically you could wire it to a two prong plug, just like a um, side lamp, for example, but there are different rules and regulations and electrical safety, blah, blah, blah. So let's not get into that. But essentially, once you've wired that up, all you have to do is plug it into the end and you're ready to roll. And I'll just plug this in and then just show you it actually lit up just to show you how simple it is. Okay, and there you go, you can see it's now lit. Now this might not look super bright on the camera for two reasons. One, it's not super bright, and two, I've got camera lights pointing at me already, so this probably won't show up quite as bright as it really is. I mean, it's reasonably bright, but it's not as bright as what you'd expect for a 20 watt LED tube. Now, of course, the first question you're gonna ask is, well, how much power does it consume? And actually, it comes pretty close. I see it hovering most of the time around 18 or 19 watts. Hopefully, can you see that on camera? There you go, I believe you can see that on camera. It's reading somewhere around 18 or 19 watts. So close enough to the 20 watts to say, yeah, that's, that's okay, that's a 20 watt LED tube. But the problem is when I compared it with another LED light fixture, um, in my bedroom, you, if you were a subscriber, you probably saw before I installed a 18 watt ceiling LED light. It's a round one, um, but it's same basic principle, LEDs plugged into the AC. So the first thing I did was simply put this up in place of that light and then test it, turn on the existing light, turn on this one, turn on the existing light, turn on this one. And honestly, you could so easily recognize that this just wasn't as bright. Even though this is consuming more power and it's supposedly rated at 20 watts, it was not as bright as my 18 watt panel. Um, the one that I've got in there is by Firefly. Of course, you know what? I spent like, how much did I spend on that? I don't remember, like maybe a thousand pesos or 1200. So <laughs> this is 150 pesos. So don't get me wrong. This is dirt cheap. Like the fact that it doesn't, you know, match a panel which costs like, I don't know, say um, five, six, seven, eight times as much. Of course, you, you know, that's to be expected. 
um, but at the same time I want to give you realistic expectations don't think that you can just say oh forget about all those like high quality fixtures I'm just going to go with the CDR King the Stark ones because that's not something I would recommend um, for those techies out there I did use my Lux meter um, I thought about capturing it on camera but last time I did that it took so long like hours um, and it was such a nightmare in editing and what did I prove that one panel was better than the other well you're going to have to take my word for it this is not as good as a Firefly branded 18 watt um, ceiling fixture. So putting that aside, are there any other issues? Well, kind of. This gets incredibly hot. Now I can touch it all the way along here and yep, there's no real problem. But where the AC comes in, that's where you've got the problem. It gets crazy hot. Now I use my Fleur thermal camera and I'll cut in a picture probably like somewhere over here. I'll cut in a picture that I took and I was reading around 65 degrees Celsius in this area here. And to be honest, that was pretty much hotter than I would like to say is okay. Um, to the point where I would say, don't run these lights if you're not in the house. Because if something happens, then you want to be there to, you know, fix the issue. Um, so, would I recommend, like, installing these all throughout your house or business? No, probably not. At least not without, like, a lot more testing to see what happens with that heat. Is it going to get hotter? Is the plastic gonna melt? Is something gonna catch on fire? I'm not saying that is gonna happen, I'm just saying what if, because that is a very high temperature. So I wouldn't recommend installing these through your home and business without a lot more testing. Um, but do you know what they're great for? Like portable lighting. If you need lighting on the go and you don't wanna spend a lot of money, 150 pesos. Put a two prong plug on the end, plug it into any AC socket, perfect. Um, for photography or videography, Videography? I think that's a word. Um, for people who shoot videos like me, perfect, 150 pesos, buy a few of these and you're gonna get really good lighting. The only downfall is that they don't come with a reflector to like kind of, you know, push the light towards the subject. So they are a very wide beam, like pretty much, I would say maybe 180 degrees. They're really a very, very, very wide beam. Um, spread of the light so yeah it doesn't have the reflectors which would be nice but you could always DIY them and if you use enough of these it won't really be an issue anyway. Um, now I haven't opened this up to even look what's inside so that's what we're going to do next. The reason why I didn't do it yet is because I have a feeling that once I open this I'll never get it to close again so I had to make sure I shot the video first. So I'll bring the camera closer, we'll open this up and have a look at what's actually inside here. Of course we know there's an LED tube because we can see it through this um, diffuser here but is it a case that they've actually got some electronics in here or have they just got like a bridge rectifier and then all the LEDs in series like we have no idea what's going on inside this so let's open it up and take a look. Look. I think this is it. You just pry the end off like that. Okay, and it's sliding out. Here we go. We've got a board in here. I have to be careful in case there's a capacitor in here which is still holding a charge. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to break the wires off on the other end in order to slide this out. That's kind of annoying. Okay, and there we go. There's the circuit board. Now, I'm not some amazing electrical engineer, so I'm sure someone in the comments can probably give a better idea of what's going on here. But off the top of my head, we've got the AC coming in here. We've got the bridge rectifier here, smoothing capacitor. We've got the transformer here. I'm not sure what this little eight pin chip here is doing. Um, couldn't tell you basically, and I don't have a magnifying glass, so I can't zoom in to get the number. But yeah, that's the little board that's managing this. And then hopefully you can see in here is the actual LED strip itself. Now I can't easily get that out. Um, in fact, let me try, maybe I can. Yeah, I'm not sure how I'd get the LED strip out because it's kind of one big molded piece of plastic, this. But yeah, that's what's inside if anyone's curious. Still works absolutely fine. But like I said, since I broke the connector at the other end, I can now only plug in from one side. Not a big deal. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.